So here's some examples of some exponential equations that you may run into while doing your my math of homework. In this one, all you see is x up here. So we know that logs are going to be involved. But before you want to take logs of both sides, you want to make sure that that exponential expression is by itself. This 0 0.04 has no business with the x. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by that. So divide by 0 0.04 on both sides. And now we have 1.21 raised to the x, 4 divided by 0 0.04 is 100. Now in the past I was saying it didn't matter if you used natural log or common log, but here I would actually use the common log because 100 is a power of 10 and the common log deals in powers of 10. So I'm going to say log, common log, 1.21 to the x is equal to the common log of 100. So again, the power comes out in front. So this is x times the log of 1.21 over here, the log of 100, we've gone over this, right? The log of 100 is going to be 2. What's the power of 10 that gives you 100? It's just 2. And then we can finish solving this by dividing both sides by the log of 1.21. So there's your exact value. It is exactly... 2 over the log of 1.21. But what is my approximation? We've been doing these and rounding them to the nearest thousandth, so let's keep doing that. So 2 divided by the common log of 1.21. And we get 24.159. So 24.1 Five, nine. Cool. It wasn't too bad. At least I hope not. If this had been, uh, if one of these guys had been an E, for example, um, I definitely would have used the natural log because the natural log can just very nicely cancel and reduce with E. This was a power of 10, which is why I used common log. All right, we've got one more here. This one is a bit more complicated because there's more stuff to do before I can apply logs. See, I've got all these guys around here. I'm just trying to get this exponential piece by itself. So first things first, we add 2 to both sides. So 7 times 3.2 to the x equals 17. Don't take log of both sides yet. You want to get rid of the factor of 7, so divide both sides by 7. Now, 7 doesn't go into 17 evenly, but it doesn't really matter so much to me. Because at the end, I'm going to be letting the calculator do all the work. All right? So, I could use common log or natural log. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, I tend to gravitate toward using, towards using the natural log. So, let's see. We've got the natural log of... 3.2 to the x, and then we have the natural log of 17 sevenths. Knowing why we apply the log on both sides, that this factor, or this power comes out as a factor, like that, makes it all worth it. So x times the natural log of 3.2 equals the natural log of 17 over 7. And it's just one little step to get x by itself because you want to get rid of this factor of the natural log of 3.2. So divide both sides by that and you get your exact value. No matter how nasty this is, this is still an exact value, right? I didn't turn anything into a decimal that wasn't already a decimal. 
so everything is pure. This is an exact value. And now, we want to turn this into an approximation. So we're going back to our calculator. We want to do the natural log of 17 divided by 7, close parentheses, divided by the natural log of 3.2, and I get this answer. All right, so you know what? This is, what is that? 0 0.763 when I round that. So point. 763. Let's store that into X. Let's check our work. So by checking our work, I should be able to type in this original equation, and I should get something that it's not going to equal 15 because I'm rounding, but it should be close enough. So 7 times 3.2 raised to the X minus 2. And there we go. It's not exactly 15, but it's really close. So, hope this makes sense. You've got to make sure that you get the exponential piece by itself first. Then you can apply the log on both sides. And then it's just a matter of putting it into the calculator.